Fighting games are... okay. <laughs> In the grand scheme of things, they're, yeah. they're not shooters. <laughs> uh, All right, that, that that made sure that literally everyone turned off the freaking thing, especially since I don't even like shooters. <laughs> yeah. Ah, fuck it. They say you're supposed to grab viewers in the first 15 seconds of a YouTube video, and fuck those people. <laughs> okay, Street Fighter V. So, Street Fighter Five has been out for four years now. Yeah. It has it. It has admittedly approved, improved a lot since it released. That still doesn't make it go really good. Yeah, now, now, if they released it in, in, in this state, in 2015, then the, the, the people would, would have been less angry. <laughs> and they would have had four years to make the gameplay balance actually fun. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe, maybe they would have reworked Akuma to actually like not even just Akuma. They, they would maybe they would have reworked everyone that's not Ryu to actually have projectiles again. <laughs> well, that oh my god, that's one of those things where I feel like I need to point out that it happened around the time Netherrealm was getting real infamous for fucking Deathstroke and dead shots bullshit. I understand why Capcom did it, but it was the wrong choice. Yeah. Which, it's not like the characters couldn't do anything about projectiles beforehand. Zangief can just spin. He's always been able to do that. Yeah, Zangief, Zangief can just spin, and people who can just, can't just spin can jump. Like, if they're worried about characters like Zangief getting shut out, the pro Zangief gets shut out by Dalseem, and the projectile crushes don't work on Dalseem's hands. But that's fine because that, that's how SF2 did it, so there's, there's no problem with that. Oh yeah, Zangief versus Dalsim has always been a lopsided matchup, and always should be a lopsided matchup. Yeah. Because otherwise Zangief wouldn't be Zangief, or Dalsim wouldn't be Dalsim, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's matchups, you know? To a certain degree, lopsided matchups always have to happen. If you end up with a game where everyone on the roster has, like, 5-5 five, five matchups with everybody, that means the entire roster is made up of Ryu. <laughs> yeah, that, that means that the game is boring. Yeah. Zangief gets crushed by Dalsim sometimes, and sometimes Zangief crushes the other Rushdown characters. It's just part of how things work. Yeah. Now, the problem is when it's a 9-0 matchup, but Dalsim Zangief is not a 9-0 matchup. Zangief will win, it's just that the odds aren't necessarily in his favor. Or Zangief can win, excuse me. Which, that's, that's the primary problem with Street Fighter V at the end of the day, isn't it? The way it's balanced. Yeah, well, the way it's balanced and how or what decided, design decisions they made when porting characters over from the older games in light of that balance. Yes. The giving stubby limbs, but then also implementing the crush counter as a way of trying to awkwardly force neutral, I think is one of the worst parts of the game for me. There have been times where I've been like, I should learn to get actually really good at Street Fighter Five. That seems like fun. And every time I do, it's just like, oh, I'd have to learn the crush counter system. Fuck that. <laughs> like, at, at what point does that get to be like, Useful. I mean, like, at what point does that get to be accommodating to new players, right? Yeah. Like, new players who just want to get in and be like, oh, I can press this button and this button seems really good. But then they have to, there's a whole system of like, oh, this character, every character has like three heavy punch moves that will cause big super combos, but like you have to hit them perfectly as someone else hits their move or some bullshit. Yeah, you need to, you need to be like five steps behind, be, behind before the other guy to be able to set it up so that you can actually hit them in, in the middle of their attack, and then you can do your combo. Oh, man. And and Alex has been trash in every version of Street Fighter Five because they tried to make him based around the crush counter for some reason. Oh, my God. Yeah, Street Fighter Five's had a, a character viability problem, too. Alex and Ryu have both just been trash since launch. Oh, sweet Jesus. I mean, I mean it's the problem yeah. with Ryu being the zoner Shoto is that, like, this is an anti-zoner game, so... Yeah. 
And I mean, they they could have they could have given a couple of good moves to Ryu to make him more viable. Not necessarily good, but you know, not like under the toad's ass bad. But like they they refuse. Everything Ryu has has to be a counter because remember, third strike happened, and people like third strike. So obviously, we should give this one character all of the versions of that one thing that people like from third strike. And he gets, like, the shittiest version of that parry, too. I, I think the shittiest word, like... Hmm, I don't know, because I'm not too... I'm not too well-versed on Ryu's parries, but I feel like Akuma's might be worse, because even if you actually parry with Akuma's parry, you need to then press the attack button to counter with it. Yes, that's really bad. I'm not... Fu- uh, Mortal Kombat 11 made the same mistake with its parry mechanic. But, like, Ryu's is just the third strike parry where he stand still and just the uh, ignores the attack but instead of putting it on forward they put it on v skill which is already awkward enough and like it's not nearly as good as third strike parries where you're car- where you pretty much just entirely ignore it right yeah i mean the, i feel like a lot of, a lot of the issues with the parry the parry mechanics that they gave to some of the characters because third because of third strike and because of getting closer to third strike in the canon i guess the the my biggest issue with all of them, all of the parry mechanics that I've seen in this game, is that like all of them have too much of a startup and too much of a recovery, even even if they do actually parry something to be useful most of the time. I almost feel like they just want to show off some of the pretty animations. I, honestly, I wouldn't doubt it. Well, the parry thing—I've always wondered why they never brought back parries. I wonder if part of it is just that they don't want. There was a thing in, like, Third Strike where players would deliberately bait out Shoryu's by doing a neutral jump, but just waiting to air parry. And I feel like they're scared stuff like, stack tactics like that might just confuse new players. I mean, it, Which, it, it, it might, but that, that's, that's, that's why you make a ranking system that works. Yeah. Like not not, not, like even, not even are... sorry for cutting cutting you off, but like no, I'm not even talking about like you know the actual ranking ranking system. Make an Elo system. Why why can Smite? You know, as shitty as Smite Smash Ranking can be sometimes, or can feel like anyway. Like why <laughs> why can Smite make a ranking system that isn't visible to the player but still tries to match people who are on roughly on the same level up? And why can why can literally every fighting game not do that? <laughs> Yeah, ELO is a serious problem for Street Fighter V. The, the visible rankings just kind of work out very strangely. Smite, I think they intentionally have it where you'll have four straight matches where you get just get absolutely butt-fucked, but then you'll follow it up with four matches where they put you up against kindergartners, right? Yeah. Like, I think Smite does that intentionally to keep you coming back, but at the same time make it clear to you that you can still learn more. Because that, that is like a... I think I have read that there's lots of games that intentionally do that as a psychological thing, is they'll throw into matchmaking every now and then a game where you're put up against people who are way too low for your level, just because there's a lot of people who only come back to video games when they win, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. Which, of course, Street Fighter Five's online has been a problem for four, the entirety of the four years. It wasn't until just a couple months ago that they made the rollback... Uh, Functional. Functional, yes. Instead of, you know, fucking flash-stepping Vega, all who is on the screen in all places at all times. Yeah. Vega Vega spent a couple couple of months in the freaking Hidden Leaf Village learning learning the ways of the of the Shadow Clone Jutsu. So that oh. so that he can climb all of the walls at the same time. Oh Jesus, Ziku versus Vega matches. Oh no. Fast Ziku, I mean. Young Ziku. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, that's one thing that I think Street Fighter Five has over Street Fighter Four is... There's Street no Fire guy. Had, <laughs> there's, no, there's no guy, yes. Uh, Street Fighter Four had one good new roster edition. One. Jury. I'm, I'm soft on Hakan, but I can see why other people don't like him. Street Fighter Five, I think, had a somewhat better record with new characters. Street Fighter Four, I feel like, had two good additions, good good new additions. I mean, Jury and Oni. Oni, yeah, I just count Oni as Akuma, you know. Yeah, Under- understandable. It is literally just Akuma, but higher power level, at least in theory. In theory, yes. 
In game, his power levels cannot match a fraction of Elena's. Yeah. <laughs> Friendship is too strong. Oh man, could you imagine if the fifth character for season five is Elena and she just appears doing the heel? <laughs> just the big the fifth, old fuck you. The fi the fifth character character of the fifth character of season season five of, of SF five is Ono supported by the twins. Oh no! Like on, on screen, you're... and the twins are cosplaying Blanca. Yes. And it, it, it's actually just that, just that guy from Grand Blue, Grand Blue versus the guy who was actually three guys. <sighs> it, it's just that, but it's the twins. So you, you, good, good luck fighting Yon. <laughs> ha! Oh, shit. Uh, I mean... <clears throat> out of the new roster additions in Street Fighter Five, if we consider G to be Q... Right, so don't count G as a new roster addition. Yeah, I I count G to be Q by default, so. <laughs> so ignoring G. What roster additions in five do you think were positive? Were good ones. Well, I like Ed. I I actually do like Ed. I like Zeku. I like Ed a lot too. Yeah. I like Zeku. I'm I like the new design of, for Evil Ryu. I don't know if we count him as a new character. <laughs> <laughs> De definitely not evil Ryu. It's Kage. Yeah, don't 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 play the arcade mode. It, it's definitely not evil Ryu. Even though we we call we call him Street Fighter Alpha Kage, and he, he he's just he's literally just evil Ryu in the picture. No, that's not evil Ryu. That's Kage. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uses the exact same facial model as evil Ryu. I mean, not not in the gameplay, but if but like uh, if you play through the arcade mode as a character, then they get their um their old arcade and things uh redrawn as like a comic style panel what thing. Yeah, I remember that. I've I've uh, gotten all the Street Fighter One endings, I think. I've gotten all of the one, uh, two, alpha, and most of four. Ah, okay. But yeah, so the SFL Alpha and Four Kage is just Evil Ryu. Yeah. Like, literally, they don't even try to hide it. It's literally just Evil Ryu on the screen. It, it's just the bit from uh, Alpha where Sagat... It's Sagat versus Evil Ryu? I think so, yeah. Well, it was more than Sagat. It was like four people had to fight Evil Ryu at once. Uh, power levels in Street Fighter are wacky. Yeah. Regular Ryu gets beaten by Ken. Evil Ryu needs Ken and three other dudes to beat. Fuck! The, apparently the power of, uh... Oh shit, what's it called? Satsui no Hado. Yeah, apparently that's pretty strong! Yeah, the, the only the only thing concerning the power levels I keep track of is the top three, which is very muddy. <laughs> so so it's... Yeah. One, any, any, three, any, any one of these three is the strongest character in Street Fighter. Oro, Akuma, Cody. <laughs> that... Yeah, those are pretty solid picks. The game also seems to be very fond of throwing Dalsim in there, which I think is weird. Maybe. I don't know. It, it, the thing, the things I've read seem, seems to suggest that Oro is very... Like, all of these three are very strong just because all of them have, um like, power limiters on when fighting. That's true. That's true. Wait, no. Cody, Cody, I... Cody doesn't anymore. Cody, 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 is, at his anymore. Full, Cody is at his full power. Does that mean that everyone else on the roster has just moved up and Cody didn't bother to train at all? I guess so. Cody fell behind, so he took off the cuffs to catch up. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I, I'm really excited for Oro with a turtle. That's like one of the only times in Street Fighter V's history that I've actually been genuinely fully excited for a character. I, I wish we we got the um the, the other I other imagining of Akuma for this game, so it would be Oro with a turtle and Akuma with a kid. <laughs> it's just a it's just a fucking juggling match. At one point, they accidentally swap. Yeah, Akuma's got a turtle and Oro's got the baby. Hmm. Oh man, but like the sad thing is, like I know that Oro when they add Oro is going to be bastardized. Yeah, probably. 
Or 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 will be on motion character. No 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 no. Actually, or 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 will be on the like one one button cooldown system of Grand Blue versus. He has to build charges up before he can do his uh, body slam crap. Yeah. For every charge, he does one slam. No, no, no. I, I, I know better. The or 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 is light grab from third strike is a is is his re skill two. His re skill one is is the freaking the Hadouken. And then his oh, his, okay. his his re triggers are his old supers. His his super is like I don't know healing from Elena, <laughs> and then and and his then, super is a fucking cutscene again. Yeah. And, oh my god, I'm so sick of cutscene supers. And and then the the only one special that Oro gets is the John Lee freaking Goomba stomp. Oh Jesus Christ! The the Oro move that I never use. It's actually really good to keep pressure on. Oh yeah, on well, that that that's part of what makes Oro a weird design is that he is a charge character, but then he does stuff like that. Yeah. Oh man. I, and I like that they're setting up third strike with the saying of like, "Oh, Oro's holding the turtle, so he's training himself to fight one-handed." Yeah, he's not able to do it yet, so he needs to train himself. I'm really hoping that that the next game they release is actually literally, literally just third strike with a bigger roster. <laughs> ha! I don't know how they do it, but <laughs> what if they just make? What if all the new characters they make for the roster have 3D models, but all the returning <laughs> characters just have the same third strike sprite? <laughs> <laughs> they photoshop Akuma's new hair on the third strike right? Oh my god. No, I, no, just have Akuma his Akuma's new intro for Street Fighter 6 is he gets an electric razor out and shaves it off. Yeah. I don't need this shit. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, they got they got they'd have a lot to explain going into third strike, wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, that's assuming they're going to move forward into the Third Strike Saga again. The, excuse me, the uh, Illuminati Saga again. Considering they confirmed Bison is still around as a ghost. So watch out, Street Fighter VI, The Revenge of Bison. <laughs> no, we, we, will go, we will go back in time and then we, we will um, see what happened in, in during the Nest Stark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's all, it's all set up for freaking SVC3. I feel or CV, like every... CVS3, every, but yeah. I feel like every time we talk about, oh man, Street Fighter 6, you and me both just turn into, uh, how about CVS3? Yeah. I mean, it it would it would be the best thing they could do. I mean, well, concept-wise, it, it could be the best thing they could do. But then, Okay. Yeah? Okay, I gotta say something. 20 years ago, when CVS 2 released, what was great about it was that we got to see the SNK characters as done by Capcom, and it's like, oh my god, Capcom did more justice to most of these characters than SNK did, right? <laughs> this time SNK makes it and does more justice yeah. to Street Fighter. Yeah, now I want it the opposite way! Now I want SNK in charge, because fuck Capcom's fighting games in the last 10 years. Fuck! Yeah. I mean, hey, the, the, the game won't look freaking... Like a hundred bucks, but it will play like a hundred bucks. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully SNK is able to make money off of KOF 14s and 15 enough to actually get budget. Maybe. Oh Christ. <laughs> I I would re I would like to see Capcom just throw loads of money at SNK to make it. Yeah, that, but they that, still that, gotta that... fucking wait on Harada to make Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Yeah. That, that, that ain't happening. That that's where I, I wish. I, I I wish I wish they they could like freaking out outsource the, the shit so they they give their IPs to Arxis to, <laughs> on, on the freaking take take on them because then the game would look good and also probably play good probably. <laughs> I can't see Arxis making a game without air combos. True, but Grand Blue, Grand Blue doesn't really have air combos. It's it's closer to Street Fighter Five according to people who, people who've played it. You know I don't pay attention to Grand Blue. Yeah, but I mean the 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 the, the chance is there that they could do it right, and if not if not I just wish that they could outsource the graphics department to Arxis. Yeah. Like have SNK work on the on the gameplay. Have Arxis work on work on the 
freaking the graphics. Half Capcom work on the budget. <laughs> and NetherRealm does the marketing. Yeah. No, NetherRealm that... has the budget. Just leave Capcom out altogether. <laughs> Cap Capcom assembles an all-star team to make Street Fighter VI, featuring no one from Capcom. Yeah, they they, they get better rev for the for the budget and the role that gives implementation. Yeah, I don't actually remember how how good freaking MKX's rollback was when we when we played it that one time because we we couldn't try it again, ever again because of Ed Boon. Well, we never noticed it, which is probably a good sign. Yeah. I mean, the, the original plan was to bring in Mike Z, but things happened. <laughs> Whoopsie doodles. Fucking rip. Anyways. Okay, Street Fighter V. Oh my god. Okay. So first things first. Addy, if you could remove anyone from the game's roster, who would you remove? Hmm. That's a good question. I feel like they could have pulled off Menat better, but I don't. I don't. I, would, I don't know if I'd say they should remove her altogether. Just you know, redesign her. A I bit. feel like this is one of the only games where I have a more. I feel more strongly about removing someone than you do. Maybe. I. I. I, I could. I. I could see argument for Falk because she. I didn't find her particularly fun to play. And otherwise, she's just female led. She is just ass. Yeah, female ass. F female ass. <laughs> As opposed to the dude ass. The well, we are getting copious amounts of dude ass from Urian and Gil, so... Yeah. Hmm. I feel like I'm forgetting someone that I really dislike that isn't Vega anymore. <laughs> Wrong. I completely forgot he exists. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Fucking hate Fong. I, I'm sure somebody out there is decent that likes him, and by all means, power to you. I, Lord knows I've got some shitters that I really like in fighting games. I can't fucking stand Fong. He doesn't fit the Street Fighter roster. Yeah. It's like, Hakan was kind of a weirdo, right? But Hakan feels like he was testing the waters for an even bigger weirdo. <laughs> And he's, like, not a martial artist at all. Doesn't use powers. Not really related to anyone's story. He's just this asshole who shows up and he's like, Ah! Poison! Two minutes! Poison for two minutes! I mean, I'm pretty sure the reason, like, the lore reason Fung is there at all is because uh, Saga, Sagat and Bison had a disagreement, so Sagat left and Bison was like, Shit! I need to find someone! Now! And that, that's how... Didn't Bison replace him in Street Fighter 4? Sagat had already left in Street Fighter 2. <laughs> was there just the three kings, or was there the vacant king? Yeah, there, there was a vacant king. No, nobody answered Bison's call. Actually, that that's ki kind of freaking... That, that's kind of loreful. Because... <laughs> I don't remember if it was before Sagat uh, got in, or after Sagat got in. But Birdie was the fourth king for a while, but he left as well. What? Yeah. I don't believe you. I thought Birdie was only a uh, Shadow member during Alpha. No, he joins. Uh, one of his Alpha endings is, is Bison going, Yo, you're good. Wanna join? And then Bird Birdie says no, and then they fight or something like that. And then after, ah. uh, after that, Five revealed that he did work, work for them for a bit. Ha! Ah. There's no way he was a king, though. He's... In his Shadaloo outfit, he's wearing the regular goons attire. Ah. Uh. It would be cool to have a game where Bison's just on the search for, on the hunt for a fourth king. Yeah, we, we get a, we get a mont montage of, of him looking at the applicants, and it's like freaking one well, of them is Ryu. <laughs> yeah, one of them is Elena. Yeah. Like she just works her way into every position somehow. <laughs> we, we, we get horned up, but he's dressed as Blanco. <laughs> Guile, you have finally saved the United States of America from Shadowloo. You finally get to the meet the President of the United States. Guile walks into the office. It's just Elena. Yeah. 
They, they, remake, they remake Zangief's SF2 ending, but in, instead of freaking Gorbachev, it's Elena. <laughs> she would do the Cossack dance, though. Yeah, she would. <laughs> but they... we're, we're turning we're turning Elena into Chuck Testa here. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm just ima- imagining, like, freaking Zangief do- does the two-frame Cossack dance, and then Elena's is rotoscoped. Ah! So it's like it's in it's in the uncanny valley when Elena does it. Oh man, you ever see the uh, original uh, woman that they rotoscoped for Elena's win animation in Third Strike? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I I doubt they got that woman's consent. It was just a random chicken and music video. I mean, and they did it just to show off Elena's ass, you know. Yeah, I mean, you usually with with like older games, you know, like in in, in the nineties and before. Uh, in games like that, they usually stuff like that slipped in and sometimes didn't get taken out. Like, I recently watched a video on Smash, and uh, in in the beta, or like before the beta, actually in the alpha, I think, or of, of Smash, but it it wasn't called Smash still. One of the backgrounds for the stages was just a close up of a woman's legs that uh, Sakurai took. <laughs> That was a level. It was a couple, couple of platforms and the woman's legs in the background. That, that's that reminds me of the Doom mods where they'd replace every texture with Tim Allen's face. <laughs> uh? Uh? Oh, f- <sighs> okay, okay. Oh yeah, right. What? Yeah, sorry, sorry for keeping things off topic, but I just wanted wanted to point this out, and I completely forgot about it beforehand, but. Apparently, Smash 1 had Korean backdashing. <laughs> uh, uh, had uh, wave dashing. Well, it, it was between the two. It, it was like, I don't remember if wave dashing is both sides or just backwards. But it was apparently just backwards and it was only in the Japanese release. Ha! Huh. Americans can't do Korean backdashing. No. That, that sounds like an insult, but this time it's actually for real. Yeah. Okay, so there is one last character left for Street Fighter V Season 5, the fifth character for the fifth season of the fifth game that launched in 2016. Fuck, it doesn't work out. Anyways. In 25th. It launched in in 25th. Yeah. Oh my god, could you imagine if they were... They announced the fifth character. He's not coming this year. He's not coming next year. He's not coming the year after. He is going to release on fucking 2025, May 5th, 2025. <laughs> and it's Booker T. Five times, five times. Oh, oh, the top five. My top five, man. Honest, eh. on, honestly, I could see Booker T feeding him a Street Fighter. He did like instead of a tattoo, he, he has the spinner Rooney. That would work perfectly. Oh, man. All right. For the fifth character of the fifth season of Street Fighter V, who do you want? Mm, that's a good question. Because there's there's a very obvious answer of, like, one of the most popular oh, characters give, in the Street Fighter series. Give me, yeah, give me a sec. I need to freaking mute myself on the recording so I can punch my microphone so it will stop buzzing, apparently. <laughs> Professionalism. I kind of I want to go with, like, a more creative answer than Dudley, though. Because, I mean, D- Dudley's like, obviously everyone would be happy with Dudley, you know? Yeah. But, hmm. Just because he's on my mind, I almost want to go with Hakan. <laughs> Which, I, no. I, I, I wouldn't want to go with Hakan. <laughs> no, obviously not. Like, I love Hakan, bless him, but I, I'll, I'm fine not seeing him ever return ever again. I know that he causes enough agony for other people that I'm willing to sacrifice him, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I have I have a couple of characters that I wouldn't mind seeing back, like Dudley, for example. Yeah, I would. I actually wouldn't mind Yun back having having the option to play as Yun if he gets the, his stupid freaking shadow shit back, which he probably wouldn't. But you know, I would love to see them return him as the twins and it, the V. It's a tech character. Picked. Yeah, it's a tech character. Character that would that would be a lot of fun. Oh, I was going to say that V skill one is Yun, V skill two is Yang. 
It just it's like uh, Triborg in Mortal Kombat, where it changes who you're playing depending on the variation you pick. Oh, uh, yeah. Either like, or, those would both be good. That'd be a really creative one, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't With that said, the, F- the pro FGC would cry out in pain. Yeah. I, I wouldn't... The PTSD. I, I wouldn't buy Doctrine Dark, but I'm pretty sure Arika already has him in, <laughs> in fighting GX Slayer. I do, ho- I do wish Arika would give some of them back. I mean... Not give some of them back, but like have them as cross. Yeah, lo- loan them they- out. They're still canon. They're still canon, by the way. Oh, the Shadowloo, the Shadowloo uh, bio website that lists off all the canon Street Fighter Universe characters. Yeah, still lists Skullamania, Darun, Mister, Doctrine Dark, all the guys. Ah, uh, then yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mind Doct- Doctrine Dark, Skullamania, or Garuda <laughs> to come back. Yeah, I liked Garuda. He's like solemn, but not shit. <laughs> There are a couple characters that I think could I didn't like when they were in the game, but I'd like to see Street Fighter Five give them the old college try. I'd like to see them take another shot at Sea Viper and make her have a character other than just cleavage. I mean, if if Sea Viper comes back, then Pink is play, buying a PS4. <laughs> it's it it, it it would be both of his girls. That that is true. That is true. Well, who's one character from Street Fighter in the past? That you didn't like the way they were in the game, but you looked at them and you're like, "There's potential here. He could be good in a different game." Hmm. I guess that would that would definitely fit Yun because I first played Yun in Alpha. Ooh. And and then and then I played him in Third Strike, and I was like, "Yeah, he he's he's the way I remember him." And then I get got better at Third Strike. <laughs> ha. Oh, uh, did you ever play him in the uh, arcade edition? You was in the arcade edition, or which which games <laughs> arcade edition? A uh, uh, four, a uh, four. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Okay, yeah, that was the game where he was crazy. Though was it the 2012 arcade edition? Because that was the one they patched to nerf him. Yun was so be- Yun was so OP that they had to fucking patch the Capcom had to break their own rules and actually patch the fucking game. Yeah, I, I remember uh, it was actually 2013, I think the last patch. Huh? Because if 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 I were to boot, boot um Street Fighter Four up on my Xbox, I would say version 2013. Ah, yeah, that that's a vital thing because in it wasn't until 2014 that everyone figured out. Oh, El- Ellen is super fucking broken. <laughs> Or no, Ultra released in 2014, didn't it? I think maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it was 2015. Where after Cap- definitely after Capcom stopped patching Street Fighter 4 and officially said, we will not patch Street Fighter 4 ever again. That was when people started figuring out, oh no, Ellen is broken. And then <laughs> Street Fighter 4 tournaments just started being dominated by her. I see. But yeah, all, like other, other Street Fighter games, older ones, well, I'd... <laughs> All right, funny, funny pick. Steve Fox. Steve Fox. Yeah. Okay, if we're counting cross tag, I'm not. I'm saying it as a joke, but it would be funny. It would. I'd love to see them redo Ed in a way that look that's more boxerish. Personally. Yeah. Because like Ed's okay in Street Fighter Five, but I I'm more interested to see what they do with him in Street Fighter Six. Yeah, and it, it has a, it has an interesting look, and like an, an interesting uh, story, I guess. But he needs better costumes. Yeah, he does need better costumes, and he he also needs to be slightly retooled so he's not just the charging buttons. Yeah, I I think having the one, ch- the one charge button, I think is fine. But like it, a lot of his buttons are really awkward because they tried to kind of force the one input uh thing with him. Yeah. Really didn't work out for Falk. <laughs> hmm. And then tw- oh, you know who I could say instead of Dudley? Yeah. DJ. Oh yeah. My boy. His 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 nostalgia costume is the is the freaking the curse design. Oh no! You go mad upon seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> you turn on the nostalgia costume. A tentacle just reaches out your TV and eats you. It's Shimogoret. It's the teaser for MVC4. 
Oh no! Oh shit! And then have MVC four. MVC four tagline is infinite didn't count. Infinite didn't count. Oh man! I, I, what I wouldn't give to finally see a series that has the balls to make a a two or something like that to shit on the sequels. Like if they did a Postal. Dead Rising two after all. Cheers. Postal. Postal. You're right. Post. Oh no, Postal. No, Postal went with Postal four. Well, yeah, they they went with Postal four, but but like the official stance stance during the whole development and in, in the game is game on the third game is just oh it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, do, in Postal two, doesn't in the uh, Paradise Lost DLC doesn't uh, the dude get haunted by the mental fucking existence of the Postal three dude? Maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't remember. I, th- I think it gets haunted by like the movie Postal Dude and the Postal Three Dude. Nice. Ah, Postal. It's a game. Yeah, it exists. It's in its weird, unique sphere of its own, where we don't judge it by the ways we judge other things. Oh man! All right, Street Fighter Five. What is your favorite stage in Street Fighter Five? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they don't make good stages anymore. Yeah, no, they, they tried to remake the Field of Destiny, but it didn't work out. I don't, I don't know why. Because, because the uh, tall grass was animated so well in the original, it would take a shit ton of work to redo it in 3D. And True. probably a shit ton of processing power. Yeah. Maybe, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Honestly, I kind kind of wish, like, I I kind of wish that in the games going forward, forward they they would just like freaking do do like packs of old sages reimagined on a high budget. Because like I I wouldn't mind paying for like a good field of destiny, Akuma's Alpha Two stage, that one burning building from CVS One. The, those sound good, but I don't think mo- like I think it would mostly just be people who are really nostalgic for the old games who would buy them. Honestly, I mean they I they, are, they already casuals. they already have us pay for costumes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but people want to pay big bucks for Chun Li tits. I guess. Oh my god! Did you see the fucking costume contest winners? No, I I, I stopped following it because I I looked at the list and I, it was something like. Oh, you can you can vote on giving a new costume to Zangief, and like I I don't mind Zangief, but like I would like to actually have a costume on my main. <laughs> okay, so they picked two winners. Guess who the two winners were? Charlie and Charlie's S. Jury and Jerry. Ah, freaking the sexy octopus. <laughs> one is like her as a punk uh, or something like that. I don't remember. The other one is her as stripper in Bison. I see. Why? Because thirst. Uh, no, no, I know about the thirst, but why Bison? Because, like, sexy, bison... sexy, sexy Bison would make more sense for Cammy. Yes, it does. They did do sexy Bison in Street Fighter Four for Cammy. Remember? No, because I never play Cammy. Ha! Yeah. I mean, isn't Jerry's whole thing she hates Bison because Bison killed her parents? Something like that, I think. Oh Christ! Really, they sh- they really they should have given a sexy Bison costume to Ed. Fucking Ken has been in the game since launch and has like four costumes. But one of them is Angry Joe, so. <laughs> Oh, God. How many does Chun Li have? They counted. All finally. of them. How... It's It's got to be near 20, right? I think, it, uh, yeah, I think it's like between 20 and 30. Jesus Christ, I got to sneeze. <laughs> Bless oh. you. Thank you. But, yeah, like the. Like, with so, so many characters, they just get nothing. Like, freaking. Ken. Ken. Ken has Angry Joe. 
Does Ken have any other costumes? Like, it, technically, yeah, he Dante. has. Oh, yeah, Dante, Dante. He has Dante. Okay, two costumes that aren't his nostalgia costumes and all that. By the way, they, would, it, would it, it freaking hurt them to make a, a third strike nostalgia costume for Ken? Because I really don't like how they, they made the Alpha one. Oh, the Alpha one, because he has long hair in Alpha, right? Yeah. Shit. But yes, I... yeah. No, go ahead. But yeah, like he he has those. Akuma has, uh, three, two. I forget. He has the he has the one that he's dressed up as, like the deity he he's inspired by. Ha. <laughs> he has that one. <laughs> he has Alpha, and he's got. Yeah, he has, he has Alpha. He has the one where he's crystals, but the, those are his battle and nostalgia costumes. And that's about it, I think. He he has the track suit, but everybody has the track suit. Oh my god, the track suit. Cause, cause, because Jury is just too sexy. Or no, Mika was the problem. Oh fuck. You remember Mika at launch? Thankfully, no. Oh, they, uh, her intro animation. Or no, 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 no. Her animation, we sh she starts up her super is uh her smacking her own ass and uh that at launch that was just the startup animation for her super and they censored it for espn they censored it in game by uh, updating it so that the game camera is just centered on her face uh i think she's still smacking her ass though <laughs> i mean probably why, why would they why would they make a new animation no it, it would be a waste of money for what is just simple censorship it, honestly. it, it would be Honestly, what they should have done is they, they should have turned on the freaking the advertisement costumes and just put an ESP on her ass. <laughs> oh, that would have been worth it. They would have lost all their ESPN money, but it would have been worth it. Yeah. Oh, man. Alright. Now, <clears throat> if you're allowed to make one just change to the way the core gameplay works what would you do projectiles now exist <laughs> so you just get rid of the v skills that crush projectiles no i would i would just give people the actual option to use projectiles that are not haokens oh like not right right how several characters like uh kage just have burnouts right yeah I forgot about that. Like I, I, I just, I just, I just wish they didn't remove so many tools. I would basically, yeah, I would want to put those those tools they removed back in. I guess because it's like, you know, the, the, he here's a show though that he has no Hadouken because that would be zoning. We can't allow zoning because that doesn't look good. Here's a Kuma. He can now only fire pro fire projectiles in the air while jumping forwards and no nowhere else. But freaking here's uh I, I I forget what other move there was, but you I, I from when, when last time we played you you found a Zengif move that they removed, and that made no sense to me. A Zengif move that they removed. I th I think it was Zengif. I think I at the time I thought that they. Uh... No, I remarked that I was surprised they didn't remove the splash. Oh yeah, it might have been that. I, I might be think thinking about that. But yeah. yes, yes. So that we, we can we, we need to give Bison a projectile because he can't have the psycho crusher because that's too scary. But the projectile also can be a projectile. It's just his hand. Huh. He can charge it to, uh, for different freaking times, but it's just it's just his hand. If you actually want a projectile, you need to meter burn it because well, uh, bloody hell. Also, yeah, no. At least he yeah. Admittedly, Bison can teleport and jump, so... Also, don't need press Nightmare, because the, the, that the best would be too scary, I guess. Oh, yeah. Well, everyone lost their supers, dude. Yeah, that's true. Like, poor fucking Ryu, Ryu didn't. the Shinshore you got turned into an EX. I forget, did he have, did, did he have the Shinshore you in 4? Yes, it was one of his Ultras. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I, that, I've, yeah, I've only ever seen seen people use the Shin Hun or the again. Oh, I forget the name of it. The Super Hadouken. Dengen? Yeah, the Dengen Hadouken. 
Yeah, because it's the better tool, but like the Shinjo, you can look so much cooler. Uh, Chunners, uh, Chunners had the Kokosho turned into a V-Trigger in a really weird way. Oh god, no, the real bad one was, uh, Super Lightning Legs getting turned into e an EX. That one was real bad. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so lame the way they did that. You know, I, from what I remember, Chun's new super is just like a freaking, uh, like basically moment 37, if, if it would have hit, from what I remember. Something like that. It's like a bastardized version of it. Yeah, and so that, that reminded me of um, this, I watched this uh, essay thing on like fi uh, fighting game animations and how the animations convey character and all that, and it was about Mortal Kombat, and the guy was arguing that Jackie's, um, one of Jackie's, like, special moves, or multiple of her special moves are very, are too video gamey and make no sense from a lore perspective, because she uses the freaking, that, um, shield thing to hit, hit the other person, and you can, you actually can't do that yourself, it's only in the grabs and stuff like that, and the yes. way she, and the way she uses them makes no sense from an actual, like, you know, if, 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 if we were to think that's um, their world is the real world, then it would make no sense for her to use it that way. And so the guy went, it would be like if, if in SF5 they gave uh, Yuri and a, com uh, a, a new super that was actually just an Aegis Reflector combo. I'm shocked they didn't do that, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, that I think that there is one guy who just like wants like, once every couple of months, produces a new video essay saying, dude, guys, Mortal Kombat sucks. Which, uh, credit for the dedication, I guess. And it's not to say that he's wrong. He's got good points. He's had some bad ones, too, from the ones I've seen. But it, it, he makes a very good point about Jackie not using her Aegis Reflectors. Yeah. I feel like the... I feel like... Here's the thing. They showed off the Aegis Reflectors in the very first uh, video of Jackie in that game as a fatality. I almost feel like they did that just to try and trick people into thinking she would have actual Aegis Reflectors. Maybe. I mean, Ed, Ed Boon is the, is the master of promising one thing and then giving you something, something that's not as good but still okay. Ah. I think Ed Boon's. I think Ed Boon's actually pretty good about giving people better than what they want. But I, Ed Boon was not the one who said Aegis Reflectors. True. Ed Boon said Ash from uh, Evil Dead, and what he actually meant was RoboCop and Spawn. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, that's a that, that that's a that's a pretty good trade. Even though I'm not a RoboCop fan or a Spawn fan, I res I recognize that there are RoboCop and Spawn fans out there. <laughs> Or no, it wasn't Spawn. Spawn was already released. RoboCop and... Shit. Who was the other crossover character from that DLC? Fujin. Yeah, Fujin. Crossover from the Mortal Kombat franchise to the Mortal Kombat franchise. Oh, shit. Get with it. Now, I mean, the 3D Mortal Kombats were pretty much were such a deviation that they could count as a crossover. The real crossover would have been if they added Card Combat to oh. MK11. I just had the stupidest idea. Yeah? Get the stickers and put on the front cover of every Devil May Cry game you own, featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. <laughs> Devil May Cry featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Yeah. Uh, they, they, yeah, they, they, they should sell it, sell it like that. Um, no, no, no. Capcom should remake DMC Devil May Cry and then put put like a picture of old Dante on it. And like remove remove new Dante, put in old Dante. And then just put put a sticker on it on it with a picture of Dante and just that just says featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. The game's finale is just Dante walks up and shoots both fake Virgil and fake Dante. Yeah. And then he just woohoo's out of there with a big, with a big ass pizza. Oh man, you, you guys are always so confused when I make references to Dante eating loads of pizza, but you weren't there for three. No, I'm 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 aware of the pizza, at least to some extent. Uh, did he ever eat a pizza in five? 
I don't think he did. No, he didn't. No, it was both three and four, though. There's a cutscene that's just him in the Devil May Cry shop eating pizza. And it's that that that's the cutscene. There you go. I see. Pizza and frosty strawberry milkshakes. Okay. Was, was that a thing in the anime? Well, anyway. <laughs> that's uh, the, in, yeah. In the, yeah, in the anime, his favorite food is strawberry milkshakes, and in the uh games it's pizza. And five what put a lot of focus on making the anime canon again, so I do remember that one of the level what you can complete every level twice to unlock a screenshot, and one of them was uh, Dante drinking a strawberry milkshake. Uh anyways, if there's one element of Street Fighter 5's gameplay design that you actually do really like, what is it? Hmm. For my part, while I don't like having it be a forced system for every character, I like the idea of the V skill adding a new move for every character. Yeah, I like the versatility that, that the V-Skill and V-Sugar systems bring. I I'm just not sure if I like the implementation. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of them, there are a lot of them that are just like, what? what is even the point of this? Like, reuse parry. But then there are some that are like, really add new ways to handle a character's kit. Like, Birdie being able to eat donuts to, spend, to build meter. Oh, uh, yeah. Because otherwise, he's a very aggressive rushdown grab character. But then if he decides that he's just going to sit on the other screen and eat donuts, that forces the other player to get in there, because otherwise Birdie's just going to keep eating and building meter. Yeah. I don't know. I feel, I feel like my experience with the v, v skill and V-Trigger system has not been as good just because I play Akuma. And, yes, and Akuma got one of the bad ones. Yeah, one of, one of Akuma's V... Like, both of Akuma's v, v skills are very situational from <laughs> from my experience, and his one one of his v, v triggers is okay but not really versatile, and his other one, which is the which is V trigger one, is cool in theory, but then it's been nerfed so you can do it you can roam and cancel with it, and it it goes away in like freaking two moves. So what's the point? Yes. Oh my god. Akuma's was ugh. Because like the the, my... the the idea of playing as Shin Akuma is fun, but I would much rather play normal Akuma and then not be, not not have the option of playing as Shin Akuma than playing then Hibiki in an Akuma wig and then sometimes I get to play as Shin Akuma for two seconds. Yeah, I, I was about to ask. Like, do you think they gave him shit V skills because he gets such good V triggers? I don't know because like, once again, once again, like oh, oh yeah, 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 no, I, I mix the two up because they they sound the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. What were you going to say? No, no, I, I was just gonna say like, oh, well, well, I read this fighting game article the other day that said a, there's a fight over whether Akuma or Colleen has the best V trigger or something like that. Akuma has the best like S. Uh, that, that's for sure. I, I was confused why Colleen's V trigger is supposed to be so good. Does it, it it increases the range on her normals or something like that? I don't play enough Colleen to know. I feel. Yeah, I feel like Colleen's in the same spot as Sea Viper, where I look at her and I'm like, "There's potential here." <laughs> yeah, but like the the dodging backwards move is just too weird. I think for most people to ever get use out of her, you know? Yeah. She she plays weirdly from everyone else in Street Fighter Five though because it feels like she's the only character in the game that has actual neutral buttons. <laughs> she's the only character in the game that doesn't have stubby limbs. Yeah, I mean from from what I remember of playing her, um, I don't remember when I last played her, but yeah, from from yeah. what I remember of last time I played her, she felt like Kula Diamond. So you know, if you like Kula Diamond. Yeah, she's definitely got the aesthetic, yeah. She's not got her personality, though, that's for certain. <laughs> she is called Soviet Russian spy instead of pretty little ice princess. Called Soviet Russian S. Yes. Oh, lots of this. I ev every female character in this game is just loads of ass, aren't they? Hmm, <laughs> I don't know. 
Maybe, honestly. I'm trying to think of ones, ones that aren't, but like... Karin? Kar- Karin. <laughs> Karin's the only one. Karin is the only one who isn't sexualized. That's weird. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense that the noble woman is the only one who isn't sexualized, but still weird. They almost never sexualize Rose, so whenever she gets at it. Yeah. But, like, then her her assistant, it, or not her assistant, her apprentice is pretty sexualized. Yeah, I I wish Manat was, like, once again, I wish Manat, Manat was redesigned for her default costume. I don't remember what, what her other ones are. Uh, there's her mummy stripper outfit, which is showing so much skin. It, it's to go with Dalzim. Yeah, yeah. That doll seam outfit's actually really cool. Some of the Halloween outfits are just like, what the fuck were they thinking? Like, uh, good old Abigail. Abigail's Halloween outfit is... Rocksteady, Rocksteady from TMNT. Yeah. But, like, doll seam's mummy outfit it looks great. And Nash's Frankenstein was an obvious one to go with, but it still worked really well. Oh boy, I can't wait for Nash to be dead again. <laughs> see, see, see you in 20 years. Yep. Yeah, yeah, actually pretty well. Yeah, that's Nash's role. Comes around once every 20 years, but he can't stay alive for longer than a single game or else how old Guile angst. Yeah. Oh god, you know what just occurred to me? No, but I had an idea, but go ahead. There's going to be more than 10 years between Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. The thing that That's going to be weird to look back on in history. The thing that occurred to me was, or like the idea that, that came to me was, what, what, if, what if in Street Fighter 6, Bison and Nash merge? <sighs> Since both of them are dead, but not really. Is is Nash not really dead? I mean, Nash is supposed to be dead, but uh, does uh, as we've seen, that doesn't really take. I mean, like Bison's got his psycho ghost running around. Nash Nash is fully dead. He'll just be resurrected. Yeah. Oh God, that's how they'll bring him back. A you need or time. Gil. They bring him back with yes, Gil. Gil. Gil will come into, like, the one scape, scrape of flesh that's left uh, of Nash, and he'll just point at it and say, My dignity shall scar thy DNA. And then Nash, it, the Nash skin pile forms. Yeah. and, and he, he's... Nash comes back, back for Street Fighter VIII, but he's just a fucking Aki raw meat monster. That, 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 that's blue on one side and red on the other. Yeah. Because remember... Because I gotta keep that one. Oh god, he still does sonic booms in the sonic uh, scythes, but he's a big meat monster. <laughs> oh, Christ. Remember when him and Blanca were the only characters that could do dashes? Yeah. Strange times, huh? Yeah. Oh, I gotta sneeze. Oh! Oh, god! It's not coming. Oh, fuck. Oh, man, I mowed the lawn the other day, and grass allergies are just fucking killing me lately. Nice. I had to step out a ton of times when we were recording yesterday, because I had to fucking go blow my nose. Thankfully, I'm only allergic to people. Ah, okay. (laughs) Well, well, you live in the city, though, so you can avoid grass a lot easier than I can. Yeah, that's true. My, I didn't give a shit about my grass allergies when I lived in the city. That was nice. Damn. It's another thing that's nice about living in the city. But, but, you, follow, but you followed Sonic and you escaped from the city. Oh, God. Now I'm in the suburbs. We get the worst of both worlds. Fuck! There's grass and there's n- nothing to do. There's grass and ass. Oh, no. No, that would be good. I need some ass to go with this grass. Let me just pop open my copy of Street Fighter Five. <laughs> the CD has been replaced by a circular picture of Colin's ass. Yeah. It's just an array of asses. Chun- the sexy Chun-Li costume that they released with a pre-order. 
Oh, man. Remember four years ago when the biggest news about Street Fighter Five was Sexy Ryu? Time, no. e- yeah. Everything was so much simpler then. Uh, when Street Fighter Five was pre-ordered, the, one of the pre-order things was Sexy Ryu, where he's shirtless and got the beard, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, everybody and their mother was like, holy shit, Ryu's hot! And it wound up actually starting this debate of, like, well, now that everybody's sexualizing Ryu to heaven and back, like, should we talk about is it different when men are sexualized than women in video games? And it ultimately resulted in Capcom walking into a situation where nobody cared when they made all the women look like strippers in the game, because Ryu looks fucking hot. I guess that I guess that that's an interesting trade there, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, Guilt, Guilty Gear at, at Strive, the next, uh, the first DLC pack they all announced. Dizzy, she's literally naked. And then everybody's like, what? But then they, then uh, Arxis is like, well, we brought back Johnny, and he's also literally naked. And then everyone's yeah. like, okay, it <laughs> works out. Johnny, Johnny does miss Final with his dick. Yeah. He just whips it at you. Yeah. Johnny, no! Don't don't do that to me. No. Oh, Christ. no! It's it, it would be. I feel like it it would be finer for him to do it to me because May's supposed supposed to be like twenty at least. But yeah, they did say she's like twenty four, twenty five. Yeah, it, it's it, at one point didn't they imply that she's like sixty? Well, they they never say, but but be uh, there's uh, whispers and pe- people are surprised that she's that old. So maybe. But is that Japan's thing about Christmas cake, though? She's above the age of 25? Oh, no. I don't know, because mo- with most of, most of the other female characters, it's not a, it, it hasn't been an issue. How old is Biken supposed to be? Very old. Like, freaking 100 years, years old or something. Well, I know she's, like, one of the two Japanese people left in the entire world, her and Anji, but... No, no, they're, 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 like, they're, there's a small colony of Japanese people. Uh, that, 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 that we know for sure because May is also Japanese. Oh, right. I do remember that. She got, like, lost at sea and it was a big uh, plot revelation that she's one of the last Japanese left in the world. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> Kami Kom- is also Japanese. Ah, yeah. Well, now it's starting to get less special. Now that there's four of them. <laughs> yeah. Can, can I just say it cracks me up that Japanese fighting game studio. Let's make a fighting game that's set in like a really crappy world where like a lot of people are suffering. Let's start off by removing Japan first. <laughs> and then Japan turned into a giant hole in the ground. Yeah. But like I Which I feel Which I... is one of the coolest stages in the game, but still. But yeah, I I I feel I feel like Johnny using his whip for his whip, his dick for for wrist finder to whip people with, would be a lot more disturbing on characters like freaking, like like Key or Sin, where they're actually like three years old. Oh boy, that debate! Oh boy. <laughs> you know what they could look, do? They look, would actually look, look, solve look, that entire. Pro- look, they they're thirty in they're thirty in dog years. Doesn't count. <laughs> What they could do to solve that problem for Key is actually real simple. For Key and Dizzy, just say Testament get uh, put mind chi- chips in them that implanted them with thirty years of age, or thirty years of like life experience. I mean, from from what I remember, it implied that ge- gears mature a lot lot faster in in both think- thinking and everything else. So, yeah, but I think that life experience factors a lot into whether people consider it creepy too. Yeah, true. But, like, with Key, though, Key thought he was human for the longest time. And Key presumably was aware that humans do not just age instantly in three years. <laughs> well, I guess it'd be six years for Key, because Sin's three, and Key obviously conceived Sin at some point, but, you know. Yeah. Like, that, that'd really just be the simple answer to me. Because, like... There's the physicality, the mentality, and the life experience. And once you get all three of those up, like, then I think people don't have a problem. Which, boy, we want to talk about, like, we can argue about these as much as we want. There is one case that we can definitely agree is disgusting and problematic. 
is Rachel in Blaze Blue. <laughs> yeah. That is like, oh boy, Arxis, please, for the love of God, tell me you weren't thinking what I think you're thinking. Oh boy, Blaze, like Blaze Blue is so fucked up on the story level. <laughs> like, even if you ignore the moral fuck up parts, like, it's still just like, what the fuck is this lore? I mean, hate has Bonkwo Shishigami. He needs to secure the TP. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't remember any of the Blaze Blue lore. Blue lore. That, that, that's just the meme in the West, isn't it? Like, Oh, we fucking hate Blaze Blue, but hey, Bang's there. Yeah, the, 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 I'm like, I, I'm, 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 I'm stuck in the middle because I don't particularly like Blaze Blue, but I really dislike uh, Bang. <laughs> huh. I'm trying to think of like a character that I think the West would like, should like better than Bang, but like, I think Bang fits the West's appreciation for masculinity, but in a self-aware comedic sense. Yeah. Whereas Hakuman, like, the West likes masculinity, and Hakuman is bleeding masculinity like crazy. But Hakuman's also very dead serious about it. And I don't think what I don't think Westerners really like unironic. Having it be that unironic, you know? Yeah. And then you have the the freaking guy with the dick sword. He's also yeah. there. He he's a very Japanese hero, though, that's a problem. I, mean, I don't I don't think he I don't think he's supposed to be a hero. From, from what, what? I, yeah, from what I remember of the lore, he's supposed to be working with uh, Carl's father, who is like decidedly evil. So, right, but isn't he like the head of a shadow organ Illuminati bullshit? I don't remember. Because Subaki is also working with the police, and she's definitely supposed to be sympathetic, even though she's trying to catch Noel or something like that. All I know is that one kid I really liked playing in the latest one, uh, Central Fiction. The kid that has the blood magic stolen from uh, Ragna. That, yeah. that guy's that guy's fucking his cousin. Nice. Way to go, Japan. <laughs> nice, Arxis. Nice. Keep doing that. Freaking sweet, sweet home Hokkaido. <laughs> I, I, I imagine, like, throughout the development of the first three Blaze Blue games, Daisuke was just sitting in the corner like, kill me. Just, just fucking kill me. I mean, Daisuke, Daisuke didn't have much to do with Blaze Blue from what I, what I remember because it was a completely other guy's series. Yeah, but it was still blatantly a bastardization of Guilty Gear. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine how painful that must have been to watch somebody else make a knockoff of your franchise because you're not in charge of your franchise anymore. Yeah. But hey... Which is not to say that Dice Guy knows the right thing to do with Guilty Gear at all times. He obviously doesn't. He's made some real shit ones. But yeah, Gu Guilty Gear 2 exists. Yeah. Oh my god, you ever seen screenshots of Guilty Gear 2's gameplay? I've seen videos of it. Oh, I've never seen a video. Oh boy. I've seen screenshots and I was like, what the fuck? This game does not look at all like it should have been made by Arxis or anything. It which it wasn't, of course. From what I remember, it, it they like it looks like they wanted to make Devil May Cry. Ha! <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that worked. At a time when Devil May Cry was doing really poor, well, not poorly, it was actually doing pretty good for sales, but at a time where Capcom was already looking into shutting down Devil May Cry to replace it with something more profitable. <laughs> Oh boy, the late the late two thousands were a wacky time for video games, weren't they? Yeah. Cat, stop rubbing your ass on the carpet. Oh, that's its wee skill. This cat is like a dog, like she really is. She comes when you call for. Her, she rubs her ass on the carpet. She insists on following you wherever you go. And she eats bones. Yeah. No, I wish she did more hunting. This cat doesn't hunt shit. Well, fucking spider problems around here, and she ain't doing jack shit about it. All she does is sleep and follow people around asking them for hugs. Anyway, Street Fighter Five. Yeah, speaking of, Alicia. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Anyways, the four characters that have been announced for Street Fighter Five Season 5, which out of them are you most excited for? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good answer. None of them. 
I, Fuck off, Capcom. I, f I definitely feel like I would be more interested in Akira if it was um, Master Kira. Uh, is that the chick from Rival Schools? Yeah. I'm interested to see them pull more from Rival Schools, at the very least. If only because it would be Capcom showing interest in making a fighting game other than Street Fighter. One, okay, controversial take. I don't like any of the old Rival Schools characters, including Sakura. Uh, the only ones I know are Sakura, Kyosuke, and uh, Biker Girl, so... I, I actually did play li Rival Schools. It was okay. I never have. Before my time, I guess. I guess. Even though I was born after you, but, you know? Yeah. Ah, uh, but you were technologically behind. Yeah. But I, 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 I did I, get to play yeah. Kyosuke in CBS 2, but he was trash in that game, so... Yeah, he had I, beautiful animations, but he was not good. Yeah, I played Rival Schools. I remember, I, if I remember correctly, I made Akira in that game. So, you know, I, hey! I should be hyped for Akira in, in, in SF5, but it's not the costume I want. And I don't, I don't know how, how they would... like. I, I, I haven't played Rival Schools recently enough for me to actually remember how she played, so... Yeah. I, can be, I mean, just because yeah. the characters remain doesn't necessarily mean you're hyped for them. Yeah, that's true. I main Jason Voorhees in Mortal Kombat X, but if Street Fighter Six came out and it was like, "Hey, Jason Voorhees," my answer would not be "fuck yeah." Oh man! It, uh, but yeah, if, okay. if, if you're talking about neglected Capcom franchises that I want want to see back, give me a new plasma sword. I imagine if they went with one of the wacky like post Street Fighter one ones like that, that or Mech Warrior. What was the one that had the uh, kid from Marvel vs. Capcom? I don't know. With the white bandana? That was, on, that was a beat-em-up. Oh, okay. Like Captain Commando, okay, I yeah. see. Man, where's Capcom vs. Capcom featuring Baby? <laughs> oh my god, I, I would love to see Captain Commando come back just to see Baby return. Yeah. By far the wackiest Capcom character. We get we get to we get to have the the biggest showdown of them all, Baby versus Trombone. Oh yeah! Like Tron, Tron just jumps out of the mech and beats the baby up in the pilot seat. Uh, that, that, I guess that would be the awkward part. I'm I'm gonna punch that baby in the face. All right. Oh, anyways, so for Street Fighter Five, what do you think? Wait, wait, you forgot the answer. Who are you hyped for out of out of these four? Uh, I could go with a cheat answer and say who the fifth one is, but no, I'll go with Oro. I liked Oro a fair bit in Third Strike. He wasn't my favorite, but he was all right. Yeah, I I, I didn't mind Oro. He's a Guile clone that does things differently, you know? Yeah. As as compared to Remy, who I love Remy, but Remy's pretty well just as straight a Guile clone as it gets, you know? He, he's, you ever... he, he's that guy, Ash, from freaking KOF before Ash. That, yes, you're absolutely correct. Well, Ash in, like, 13 had traps he could at least do, so that was different, but otherwise, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which, I mean, hey, I said before, I want Ash to come back for KO15, so fuck it. You and me are both glad that fucking... What's his name? Asshole. Unmemorable final boss with a thousand fists. Uh, Verse. Verse. You and me are both glad Verse got axed. Yeah. Oh, man. CVS3 featuring Ash, Rugal, and the sports team. We got all the losers here, boys. <laughs> but there, there's five different ver versions of five different versions of Rugal. Imagine Hakan versus Brian Battler. I'd want to have that matchup just so, as it's going on, I can yell, "Yeah, fighting games!" If it, if... As oh, Hakan imagine, imagine himself in oil and Brian Battler spins through the air. 
Imagine freaking Raiden versus El Fuerte. Ha! Raiden's actually cool. Come on, don't yeah. shaft him with El Fuerte. All right, Ramon versus El Fuerte. Ha! I don't know that I... I don't know that there's any KOF character I'd really consider as lame as El Fuerte. Yes, there is. Choi. Yeah, oh, I was... pro probably Choi. Choi's pro probably the, the good... um. Freaking preparing us for how how good the character how good I think the character is. I went with Ramon because because they're both like luchadors. Yeah. Okay. That's what you meant. Oh man, uh, we've not properly been able to get Blanca versus Choi yet. Because remember, Choi was only a striker for Chang in CBS too. Ah uh, yeah. So 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 now we get the ultimate crossover and we get we get Blanca, Choi, and Kano all together. Oh, well <laughs> They never actually hit each other. They just spin, hit all the sides of the screen like fucking pinball. Yeah, it, the, the, the reason the reason Tekken versus Street Fighter is taking so long is because it's actually Tekken versus Street Fighter versus KOF versus MK. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, it's just Mugen. Yeah, Harada is having a hard time programming roll, rollback while while people are also spinning through the air. Oh god, especially if they kept that stupid ass move Kano had in the older game. Some of the games where he can delay the ball so he just spins in place in midair for like three straight seconds. Yeah. I love how stupid they, that move looks. They, they give it to everyone now. Oh, God. Everyone. Fucking Zangief's doing it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Abigail. Abigail's just half the screen. They, they, they give Good it luck dodging that, motherfucker. They give it to Onslaught, who is here for some reason. Onslaught. Fucking Onslaught. I forgot. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Marvel versus Marvel. You get Apocalypse on one... Giant Apocalypse on one side, Galactus on the other. No, no, no. I have one better. <laughs> MVC4. The you get to the final boss, and it's actually two bosses. On one side, you have you have gigantic apocalypse. On the other, Phoenix Wright. Oh no! <laughs> He's replaced the judge. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, so I think we can both agree that we'd rather see Capcom take a shot at something else other than Street Fighter Six, right? Yeah. But nonetheless, the leaks have indicated that Street Fighter Six is what's coming down the pipe next, though not anytime soon. <laughs> All right, controversial opinion. I think they they could form a, form an interesting idea around the tech, tech team fighter. They definitely could. I don't know if I, it, like I don't know if they could pull it off because it 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 is current Capcom fighting game department we're talking, but. An idea could but be made. Gone, though. That's the vital thing. I'm more hopeful for Street Fighter 6 than I've been in decade in a decade cuz Ono's gone. I mean, I I'm, I'm just I'm not hopeful for Street Fighter 6 for the same reason I don't particularly care for Street Fighter altogether as a series, which is that like just like Mario, Street Fighter to me is just a constant. It's there. It will never go away. Ha. Huh. So like I don't look for forward to the next Street Fighter or the next Super Mario game the same way I would look forward to KOF or Sonic or something like that. And I don't do as many deep types into it as I do those other things because just because Street Fighter will never go away. Street Fighter will always be here. And and and, and if I will be pro proven wrong like I will be proven proven wrong uh down the line. But that's not, that's not gonna be for a while, probably, unless Capcom freaking goes into goes into bankruptcy. Oh, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> that's you. Thirty years from now, when we're in the apocalypse, I'm gonna be sitting around in my fortress of man meat, and I'm like, man, I wish I had Street Fighter right now. <laughs> no, like a card which hits your head, and 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 a guy in a blanca mask runs away. And you look at the cartridge and it's Street Fighter 35. Ha! Huh. You don't have anything to play. I like though. the idea yeah. that Ono's, Ono's going to continue making Street Fighters after the end of the world. <laughs> That's his life now. 
It's the only thing he can do to keep his life sane. Yeah. Like, the people around him are starving to death, and he's like, there's too many plus frames on this Ryu normal. Blanca is not good enough. I need to make him better. Blanca doesn't. Blanca now has one frame shot of Earth. <laughs> All of Blanca's move, moves are zero frames. Oh no. He has, he has a force field around him that, that damages you actively. Z fucking zero frames. That, that, that is like, that is legitimately, you input it, it, it happens. Like, how many one frame moves are there in game, video games? Because I can think, the only one I can immediately think of is fucking General Rom's command throw and Killer Instinct. There's not many. I mean, there are many, but it's not many that you notice because it's one frames. Did Guilty Gear or Marvel vs. Capcom at some point have a one frame shore you? I feel like they must have tried that. I feel like that would be a Marvel thing, because Marvel has stupidly fast studied everything. Yeah. But, like, zero frames would legitimately be, you press a button, enemy gets hit. Just no animation for it, just instantly fist face. Yeah. Oh, Christ. Oh, man. All <laughs> right, so... Yeah. If there was a gameplay change that you think, Street Fighter Six, like, any kind of big scale change that you think would really, like, turn the series around, what would it be? I wish they would take a note from, um, from Uni Unist, or Uniclear, I guess now. <laughs> Huh. And may may so hit detection works like that. By which I mean that I wish that um combo or juggle combos were more welcome. And not only were they more more welcome, but if if it looks like you you would hit something, then it actually hits. And and be juggled and and, and I like I I would hope that they would balance around that. So you know if they don't want you to juggle off of something or if something would be too much, then you just fall faster, or you just or they just don't do as much damage. Street Fighter Five has juggles. It's just that they're really hard to hit. Yeah, and 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 it's also a lot of, like it a lot, lot of lot of juggles I've been able to pull off in Street Fighter Five felt the like similar to MK juggles in that you know there's this one pet that, that you can do a juggle combo in, but if you don't do that pet, then no luck. <laughs> so I, I I wish they were more uh, forgiving with how people can set up juggle combos and just balance it so you know it's it's not stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I, I would say that definitely part of it is, like, making there to be more combo freedom. Because I think, like, the more specific a game's combo systems get, the harder it is for people just getting in. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, people complain about not being able to learn combos in Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. And admittedly, part of, like, a big part of that is just that Street Fighter's challenge modes look like they're trying to teach your combos, but they're actually testing your ability to do the hardest combos in the game. But, like, nobody ever picked up Marvel 3 and was like, I can't do combos. <laughs> you press buttons in that game and combo happens, you know? Yeah. And then that's why it's hype. Because, like, I, I could say, like, oh, I, I wish Street Fighter 6 was, was an air dasher or something something stupid like that. But, like, and te technically... That would cover the thing I want, but it's not actually what I want because I don't want Street Fighter to be an anime fire. I just want Street Fighter to. I just want Street Fighter to be more fun, and 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 more fun to me is being being able to do combos more easily. Yeah, I mean, you can tell there's still been a decline there because look at old combo videos of Alpha or Third Strike, right? Yeah, because like Yurian still has the Aegis Reflector, but he can't pull the same stuff with the Aegis Reflector he used to in Third Strike. Yeah. Another thing is, because I feel, I feel like some people could mi misinterpret what I'm trying to say, is that, like, I'm not trying to say lower the skill ceiling with it. Lower the skill floor, make it easier to get into, but even even, even, even if that's too much, like, I, I can still get, um, like, you know, if it, if, if it had as, as much versatility, if Street Fighter V's combo system had as much versatility as Third Strike or Alpha did, then I feel like it would still be okay, because that's how Street Fighter does it. But, Street Fighter V doesn't. No. It's here, here. Here are the preset paths. You can choose between like I don't know three or four options to get there. 
but you will do this path. And if you don't do this path, there's no combo. Yes. And, of course, there's several characters that just straight up don't have good combo paths altogether. Yeah. Like, God bless Ryu, he... Well, he, he's better now that they gave him the EX donkey kick back, but, like, before they had the donkey kick, Ryu was in trouble for combos. I honestly couldn't figure out any freaking combos with, even with the EX donkey kick. Yeah, it has to be still real simplistic. It still has to be classic just wall bounce shit that you'd do with any other character, you know? Yeah. And, like, even, even with the characters where it's fun... It's only fun for the first, like, three or four times that you do it. Because, like, Akuma, Akuma's freaking, freaking V-Trigger 2 makes it so you can actually air combo in Street Fighter V to a certain extent. But it's only, I don't know, two or three moves that can be cancelled in, in the air. And so you, all, you can only have, I don't know, like, freaking 24 different, different setups if those even link like that. Oh, man, it's... And, and I mean, characters yeah. having different differing combos is a big part of the fun, and I think that differing combos could really add a lot. Like, I mean, Yurian here. Yurian is like to me the big example of like Yurian can pull off the biggest combo bullshit ever put in a Street Fighter in Third Strike with the Aegis Reflector, but it never feels unfair because he has to get the Aegis Reflector out first, you know? Yeah, he needs to set it up. He he needs to put the Aegis Reflector behind you. He needs to knock you into that, and then he can actually start doing the combo. Yes. And making Akuma be the only one in the game who can do that, do air combos, I think works. Here, you don't want, you want to know what, here's what I'd do. Yeah. Get rid of V-Skills. And, oh man, this would be a really, get rid of V-Skills and V-Triggers. And I, this is going to be a real fucking, uh, if, if there's, if there was an audience to watch this, they would call me a boomer for saying this. Take it back to Street Fighter 3 when inputting a medium punch and medium kick would do an auto overhead. And inputting uh, both of your heavies would taunt. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and say they would fix the game to add back the taunt bonuses from Street Fighter 3, so I'm not going to say that. I would also say, have a tutorial that says more than just walk forward, walk back, punch Hadouken. Do some basic explanation of, like, this is what's important. Change the trials so that it doesn't just explain, hey, this is a Hadouken, this is what Hadoukens are good for. Because that that's fine. That's fine, right? Yeah. But ha have some stuff where it says, like, generally this move is pretty good. You're pretty safe to use this one, right? Because in a game like Street Fighter, that's where uh, casuals get hung up, is they don't really understand what makes a button good. And I mean, the, the thing, thing with that is that like that, that's getting them ready for competitive play, and a, a lot of casuals won't give a shit about competitive play. Th then they probably won't go to the tutorial anyway, but, you know, still. Like, I feel like with tutorials, um, the, the one I've played best, that, that was the best, still, is, is Guilty Gear Exert. People, people say that better tutorials have come out still, or since then, rather. And I won't say that they, that they haven't, I just haven't played those. But like to to me that, that that was a pretty good tutorial of just walk forward and backward because it was set up as a mini game. It wasn't you freaking looking at a thing that, that that just went okay. Here's a punch. A punch is good for a punch. It was okay. Here here's a minion. This minion will only die to a punch. If you hit it with anything else, it doesn't die. But you can still do those moves. It just won't die. And then yeah. Well. What Guilty Gear Exard's uh, tutorial is good for is it, it's very good at teaching your muscle memory. Yeah. Which I wonder if that's part, if there's parts of it. Because, like, I've been thinking on the theory of the, uh, the Leffen's theory, right? The the body, the heart, and the mind. That's I don't think that's Leffen's. Is, is it not Leffen's? No, I, I, I freaking hell. I, I referenced the guy in one of my videos and I forget his name, but it's not Leffen's. It's, uh, like, Mr. Thompson or something, his name. I'm looking it up right now, but I was thinking on that because I was talking with old Soon the other day, and when I was talking to him, I said to him that I think one of the best aspects Soon has, what makes Soon good at video games that he's good at, is 
he's really good. He's good at messing with people's minds, and he's good at predicting them. It's not laughing, it's laughs, okay? Oh, it's laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, laugh. It's, sorry, laugh. I, if you're watching this, I did miscredit your theory there at first. Whoops. <laughs> your, your name's too similar to Leffen. I'm sorry, buddy. Anyways, laughs theory. And to me, like, Soon very solidly seems like a heart player, right? I don't know. Soon to me, from, from how I've talked to him, seems like a mind and body player. I don't know when I see when I see him play Smite. He's so much better at jukes than the rest of us. You know that's what makes him good at. Oh, I jukes I forget. Is is it is hard? The is hard freaking baiting people. Yes. Okay. Then yeah, he he's his mind, his body and my or body body and heart. Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, body is like reflexes and muscle memory. Mind is reading about the game and reading the stats. And heart is jukes and setups. Well, not setups. Uh, jukes and feints and so on. Yeah. And I, the, when I thought about it, like, looking at our little group of four, like, excluding Mike and Goku, because I've not played with either of them enough to really figure out what type they are. Goku is mind. Goku is so much mind. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> okay, you've played enough with Goku to know what he's in. Okay. Uh, go Goku Goku is uh, Goku is freaking Goku Goku is body and mind definitely. <laughs> ha! It seems to me like we've got sol we've got a person who's in each point of the trifecta, right? Yeah. And then there's Pink. <laughs> and Pink, I can't figure out for the life of me. Pink Pink is Pink is body and heart. You think so? I mean. I, I I spent two hours beating him, so yeah, and he he didn't notice the the thing I was setting up every any any time, so I I would assume. Because <laughs> when oh. when when he when it gets down to it, when it when it gets down to um to reflexes and shit, he he puts up, he 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 does the things good, and when it comes to feigning, he he can feign good as well. But it doesn't seem like it, like you know he he also learns by doing like me so I I don't think he would he would put much time into research and shit. But he knows like the meta of Rainbow Six Siege, or he knew the meta of Rainbow Six Siege for a good while. Yes, by by doing, he he observed the meta meta through playing. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess you're probably right. I I should probably just ask him next time I see him like, hey, where'd you learn that? Yeah. <laughs> And then he says, I learned by doing, and I go, oh, fuck. Well, the, what, what made me bring it up was, I wonder if each of the tutorials hits each of those types differently. Because, Maybe, yeah. Like, Guilty Gear seemed to hit the body really well, where it's just training you to do the reflexes to, like, be able to do the maneuvers really well. And that was, that was far and away, like, Immediately, what I thought of when I was playing Guilty Gear Exar tutorial is like, this is doing a really good job of teaching me to do like Roman cancels on reflex, which I never, I never got good at doing Roman cancels on reflex, but I was good at doing them in the tutorial. And I wonder if that's like related because then like Killer Instinct is a lot more mind focused, where it's like this button, this kind of button is usually good in this sort of situation, so and so on. And I need to play the Skullgirls tutorial again, because after all these years, it's been a while. But, like, I, I, I wonder, like, how could the, pos the upsides of different tutorials... Because there's, like, there's some tutorials that we can all agree are, like, the shits. Yeah. Street Fighters, awful. Did Tekken even have a tutorial? Oh, uh, Street... Well, to, to give my opinion on Street Fighter, Street Fighter is not awful. Street Fighter is literally unusable because it gives you no control. It's a video. Yeah, it, yeah, that's pretty bad. But yeah, Tekken, Tekken tried to do a tutorial in Tech 2, and people shit on it, so Harada removed it from 7. Oh, is that the, uh, the thing where you make combat? Yes, the, the, combat, the combat tuning, uh, or whatever the hell. That, that, that mode was a tutorial, tutorial to Tekken. That's the, the Harada, you may imagine, building upon, upon that in 7. And then people just shit on it instead of giving constructive criticism, criticism so we just removed it altogether. Huh. Ah, oh, shit. I actually, I, I, I never completed that combat mode, but I think I actually kind of liked it. I completed it a couple of times, and I mean, it, it wasn't perfect, but it, it, you know, you could see that there was an idea there. 
Yeah. So it's yeah. A, it's a shame that that it went over. I'm I'm a fan of the doing the kind of learn by doing uh, approach to it. Yeah. Like I, I think it I think at some point they should have one that's like teaching you against throws, and it would just have an enemy who keeps going up and trying to throw you, and the way to beat him is jumping. You know. Yeah. They 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 did do that do that, but with throw attacking from from what I remember. Oh man, throw attacking! I feel like throw attacking is the wrong thing to teach people. Yeah, <laughs> maybe probably. in Tekken, in Tekken the throw attack window is a little bigger, but like in most games, the throw attack window is so tiny you'll only pull it off if you are going for a throw yourself. I mean, uh, yeah, at, at our level, yeah, in at higher levels, people would know that that's always coming just by you know observing um freaking yeah the walk up. The, the 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 signature shimmy walk up. Oh man, that that that's a question. I don't think I've seen any that try to teach heart. It would be like, here's how you shimmy. <laughs> Give him a good old shimmy there. Because the thing the thing with heart is that heart, you're supposed to pick up heart through playing no, normally. Through one I of the ways. So, but I, yeah. I think that just means I'm dumb then, because I've been playing for eight years and I'm still a terrible heart player. That's because you didn't they don't spend the freaking playing Tekken online. <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. Like gen genuinely, the thing that t taught me how to play heart properly was playing Tekken online against randos. Huh. Which is funny to say because I don't know how to play Tekken anymore. <laughs> some of those games, it's great. Like some games, it's like a bike and you never forget. Some games, you come back years later and you're like, "Oh fuck." Tekken is definitely one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it. I think the thing, the other thing with that is that is just that you know you you play 2D fighters for a long enough time, you just forget how to traverse in the third dimension as well. <laughs> Sidestepping is important. I always forget that. Yeah. Like, Devil Jin kicks my ass every time I fight him in Tekken because I'm too stupid to sidestep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Like, uh, I could do it a lot easier in Soul Cal because, like, it just anytime you press up or down, you sidestep. But, like, in Tekken where you got to double tap it, like, oh, brain no worky. That's not an input I'm used to doing in any game, honestly. The double down or double up. For me, it is because, uh, from what I remember, I don't remember remember exactly if it was uh, the actual game or if it was um a Mugen, But for in in one version of Noob Cyborg, teleport was on double down. So, ha. Huh. It was probably Mugen. I from what I remember, every time he was in a game, it was down up. Yeah, which, which I am not fond of the down up input, but eh, I've gotten better at it over the years. But when you're new to fighting games, the down up input is your enemy. You never input down and then up fast enough. You know, it just just turns into a crouching jump. Which I'd I'd, say... I'd I'd comment, but I've been playing MK for most of my life. So. Ha! Okay, I got one last thing to say that I think would improve Street Fighter VI. Yeah? And th this would be the simplest one. Change the name of Trials or uh, Challenge Mode. Whatever. What, is, what the name is for the combo challenges. Change it to like something like Extreme Combo Challenges or something. Make it clear these are not the combos you should be doing with this character. These are the stuff to prove that you've got... Uh, Daigo level inputs. <laughs> yeah. They, they call Street Fighter 4 it was real bad, but in Street Fighter 5 it's down to three frames. Which, can, can I just go ahead and say, like, there was a point in my life where I was like, there shouldn't be such a thing as three frame input windows. Like, now that I'm older, I'm willing to recognize, like, you know what, I'm perfectly comfortable with there being combos that I can't do. Fucking let, let Daigo have his fun. Because, yeah. like, the majority of the one... One frame input combos are not viable to actually do in a match because you're not going to pull it off ninety percent of the time. Yeah, they they should. They should go call... can't pull off one frame combos ninety percent of the time. They they should call that more Street Fighter Six Suplex Edition. Suplex Edition. Uh, like, what if they <laughs> put a, like a what if we put like a lot of like big party bullshit around it and it's the street fighter six combo challenge 
And when you open it up, it pops up a, a big like window that just says, these are the hardest possible combos. They may not be the best, but they're the most difficult and impressive to pull off. They're not any good in a match, but can you pull them off or some bullshit like that, right? Yeah, and then once you do it, once you do it against a stand, standing dummy, then it connects you to Taigo through the internet immediately and has to do it in a match. Oh no! That's how you make it official. And Daigo parries every hit. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Huh. So with Street Fighter Five, how would you rank? It amongst the Street Fighters. Hmm. Probably like bottom three. Who? <laughs> to me, it's higher than one and two, but it's not higher than any of the others. Yeah, I, I like I like two better. I'm not sure about four. Like four, 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 and five are roughly on the same level to me. Ha! Depending... Four's definitely not got the pomp and circumstance. Yeah, I mean, technically speaking, the the, the character models in five look better. Some of them. Yeah, some of them. A Alex with his good old French fry hair. Ken. Ken. Oh, Ken's the bad one. Yeah. But you so know, the, yeah. The female character models look too good. One could say. Yeah. Oh, oh, that that that's a lot of internet porn. That's a lot of internet porn. Oh man, Street Fighter Five and Overwatch came out in the same year. That that was that was a good year for those SFM porn guys, wasn't it? Yep. Oh Christ! I wonder if those guys make much money. They got to have like Patreons and shit, right? I mean, that any anything to do, anything to do with things people can jerk off to probably makes a shit ton of money. If, if hentai artists are something to go by. Yeah. I, that's, that's just weird to me, making a living off of taking somebody else's video game model that someone else put a lot of time and love and care into making, and, you, and then you just make, like, this fucking uh, animation of them getting fucked by, I assume, a furry or something. I mean, you know... This is second-hand hand knowledge, because not only did I not see the video, but I saw it in a video of a, of a guy, like, basically it was reaction content. But... A guy getting banned off Twitch? <laughs> no, no. The, guy, the guy saw it on YouTube as a recommendation, and he was like, what the hell, and then went away. Because <laughs> it was a video, it was, I think it was either Minecraft porn or Roblox porn. Oh, God. And you can, you can imagine either of those. But then, like the the thing with that is that like we're appalled and we 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 don't really li like the idea of these. But then we have to remember such a thing exists as a Minecraft, uh, an Olympic roleplay server. So <laughs> now we just left. He's done with life. <laughs> they're blocks. They're blocks. How do you sexualize a block? Well, you go, you go into, you go into Blender, and then you give it, you give it a, you give it a skin color skin, and then you also like put, you put on freaking uh, <laughs> like rectangle for a dick or something. I don't know. Can't make. Oh, I'm going to. I'm about to ask a very cursed question, but would that mean that the uh, Minecraft vagina is just a box? Not, no, 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 literally no. It's, it's a Minecraft chest. Not yes. even not even trying to make it look like genitalia. It's just the Minecraft chest. Well, I was going I was going to say say that that Minecraft vagina would be like four four stairs. <laughs> like small or something. Uh, I'm so happy yeah. Pink, Goku, and Soon and Mike aren't here for this. <laughs> Street Fighter Five, pre-order for <laughs> pre-order for Minecraft vaginas. We can we can just bring this up later if we want Pink and Goku to commit seppuku. Yeah. Uh, I I I'll, I'll do it in my YouTuber voice, just to make Soon sure. Won't, yeah. Soon won't commit seppuku. He'll just commit murder. Soon, soon, won't, soon won't commit seppuku. 
Soon, soon we'll look look up pictures of freaking Yoshi like freaking feet oh, porn. Soon we'll double down. You're right. Soon, soon we'll keep sending us pictures from it, even videos. <laughs> Somebody help! My internet friend keeps sending me pictures of Minecraft. No, no, no! Somebody help! My friend keeps sending me sending me Minecraft porn. Bloody hell. Uh, are you alive? Is... Yeah. Oh, God. And it just occurred to me. This is probably going to get worse with Street Fighter 6 because Street Fighter 6 is going to have better graphics. Yeah. But it's going, to, it's going to still have the absurdly sexualized Chun-Li with the massive thighs. No, 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 no. The, her thighs will be all stick on her chest. By, by which I don't mean her tits, I mean her actual, like, <laughs> I mean her actual, like, you know, the, the torso. Hang on, hang on. Do you remember the bug in Street Fighter Five and the beta where the jiggle physics on Chun-Li's chest were fucked up? No. So there was a bug where the jiggle physics on Chun-Li's uh, boobs were going absolutely mad in the beta. And every... It, every time Chun Li did e even anything, like the slightest maneuver, her chest just moved like a waterbed. Nice. Like it, it, it looked silly. Let me, let me get a gif. You, you should I imagine. In there. Yeah. Uh, street fighter. It, it doesn't move just... like you expect it to. When you, when I say like jiggle physics going nuts, you imagine it flying off into the sunset, right? Like Chun Li's tits have lift, have lift off. Oh boy, if this was a Shut Your Mouth Lounge, that would be the episode title right there. <laughs> Hang on. You know, like, it, it's, it's, speaking of stupid Street Fighter stuff, though, like Street Fighter V stuff, though, I just want to... Oh god, that's in my Google history now. I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> nice. Now you are going... Now not only will soon send you Minecraft porn, but so will Google. Uh, but... Okay, here we go. Someone got a comparison shot of post, pre and post update for fixing the bug. And Pink is going to have so many questions when he sees this in the text chat. <laughs> like, <laughs> they just do a full <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> they do a full helicopter. It's freaking ridiculous. It's like she's not. It's like she's got cucumbers under there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, that one of the first priorities in the beta was holy shit, patch that out, because Chun Li was just doing that in every match. Boy. Oh uh, shit. <laughs> the, the, uh, spe speaking of stupid Street Fighter Five stuff, though. I remember seeing a video of it was uh someone modded modded the, modded the game, and they did everyone's supers as Kami. And let me tell you, the Shango Kusatsu never looked scarier than Kami. Oh God, does she make a big monster demon face because she's not got Akuma's face proportions? Yes, she ha she has all of the chin. Oh no! Oh, I love that when it tries to stretch out facial features to match the one. <laughs> Yeah, I'll I'll see if I can find it once we're done recording because it it was a video, but I can't imagine how it looks on Abigail or Abigail oh, doing someone else's, so he just gets scrunched down. Yeah, I, I Abigail was also pretty good from what I remember. If 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 you like Slenderman, oh man, I'm real fond of when like the eyes need to be in a different position than where they are at the moment, so their eyes are just shooting out of their skull. Yeah. Uh, I, some people, like, immediately after Resident Evil 2 Remake came out, they did that and put Leon's model on, like, Marvin. And Leon walks the entire game, not with his eyes just shooting out of his skull, but, like, bulging out super hard. Nice. And, and they modeled the, they actually modeled, like, the rim around his eyes. So you can see the veins and everything. So he's just walking around with bloodshot eyes all the, all the time. Makes sense. Oh, I gotta get a picture of that because it's just so fucking ridiculous. I, this Leon model change this is probably not gonna bring up the results I'm looking for. Leon, what if I just Google Leon eyeballs? 
Okay, it brings up pictures of Birkin, which honestly I should have expected. I, I I put in Google Resident Evil 2 eyeballs, and it just gave me the, that boss with the giant eyeball on his shoulder. Ah, uh, makes sense. Okay, Resident Evil 2 Leon mod. Please, for the love of God, do not bring up Naked Leon. It brought up let Naked Leon. All right, that's it. I'm <laughs> done for today. He, he does miss fighters with his dick. Oh, God. It actually just brought up Naked Leon. Well, I've had an interesting Google search today. <laughs> At least I... I didn't post N Naked Leon in the Discord chat. Yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a real interesting Street Fighter V talk, Pink. Don't worry, you missed out on a lot. Oh, shit. Oh, you know what? Hey, I, I, I can't remember. This This is a weird thing to ask about, but I can't remember. Does Chun-Li have the Kokokin animation in this game where her ass juts out, or is that only a Street Fighter Four thing? I didn't pay attention to it, honestly. <laughs> Ah. Uh, oh man, Street Fighter Six. I can't imagine what fighting games are going to look like on the next generation. Because like they're going to try and show off the graphics and make it all pretty looking, but how are they going to do it with just two characters? Yeah, I mean they can with the environments and the characters. Yeah, I mean that considering what we've already seen of what is implied to be the detail level of PS Five, where Aloy has Peach Fuzz, they could probably get pretty hard in there, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm still I'm still looking forward to the time when, when I can get Assassin's Creed Unity, but, like, Assassin's Creed Unity level graphics, or better, but with, uh, more frames, frames. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm afraid I don't have enough frames in my Assassin's Creed, I need you to add more. What do you mean 15 is not enough? It's cinematic. I need to install some extra frames. Yeah. I need to download more frames. <laughs> oh, we found the missing frames. We've added them back in. Don't worry. The funniest They're thing just hidden somewhere in the coding. Yeah, the funniest thing is that they, 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 they then proceeded to remove the freaking graphical fidelity from all of the versions, even PC, and the frames did not get better. Huh? Oh, man. Oh, that's the part I'm excited for with the PS6. How many... PS6? God. PS5, where so many of the launch games are going to be just like, oh boy, look at that person with no face, just floating teeth and eyeballs. But the teeth and eyeballs don't have ray, ray tracing on them. Oh man, that's going to be, I'm going to see the sunlight glaring through their the caps between their teeth. Yeah, you, you're going to see the so sunlight through their, through their transparent skin and freaking inerts. Oh god, that'll be the day when they model all the insides of a person. So when the skin glitches out, you just see a fucking skeleton walking around with intestines and a stomach and a heart. Yeah. I mean, hey, would... MK12. Yep, Mortal Kombat will almost certainly do that. If they do Left 4 Dead 3, Left 4, Left 4 Dead 3 will definitely do that. Left 4, Dead 3... Left 4 Dead 2 got pretty close to that, honestly, so... Yeah, Ed, Ed, Boon, Ed Boon will be cracking the wave personally. <laughs> on the 3D artists, so that the inert can can look realistic when cut up, cut apart. I don't think Ed Boon has anything to do with Mortal Kombat yeah, anymore. I don't. I think he has something to do with Mortal Kombat. I don't. I don't expect that he would be the person actually cracking the whip above the freaking art directors. I think Ed Boon just comes in every day and he's like, "Will you guys just, for the love of fuck, let me make a Tekken game yet?" And they go, "No." Like, every time Ed Boon is, like, suggesting something new that they add, it's like, oh, this is a Tekken or Virtual Fighter thing, Ed. Yeah, I was about to say. And Ed pretty well goes, yeah, <laughs> and? Oh, uh, I was about to say, he he comes in, he goes, can, can I make Tekken yet? They go, no. Then he goes, okay, screw you guys, I'm making Virtual Fighter 6. And then he yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he was pushing that around for a while. I don't know, if, like... Anything more rumors came out about that? No rumors came out about it, but the thing the thing with that is that it might actually be somewhat in the works because Harada tried uh, for the Jap for I, I don't remember if it was specifically Japanese or if it was just Asian, but whatever the the round table 
none of the tried inviting Sega. So, so maybe, maybe, maybe Ed Boon got something together. <laughs> Ed Boon and Arata, the team to save Virtua Fighter. Yeah. Our powers combined. Man, you're just about halfway to the fighting game Avengers there. Jesus. Let's march out Daisuke as well. Yeah, da da Daisuke, Daisuke is the Hawkeye of the team. Yeah. Arika. We gotta have Arika there, even though he's not really done anything that since Street Fighter 2, but you know. Arika's gotta be there in the same way Captain America's gotta be there. He was the original. Yeah. Oh man. And then freaking uh, who who's the who's the last guy? Who's Vido? Uh wit Widow, who's the lamest one? I mean, it, it was Ono. It, it was Ono for a while, but he's gone. So, oh, Ono and Rico would just have to fight all the time. Yeah, the lamest person they could march out who's still a fighting game legend. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a guy who's mostly known for just making mediocre fighting games. Because for like guys that I don't like but still made good fighting games, like there is. Uh, Ah, shit, what's his name? The guy behind Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive who got in trouble for sexual har sexually harassing his secretary. Freaking, is that Inafune? I forget. Inafune? No, I, I, is that Inafune? Why do I, rec I recognize the name Inafune, but I don't think it is. I think Inafune might be Mega Man. I forget. Keiji Inafune, yes. Keiji Inafune is Mega Man and Dead Rising. No. Uh, oh, I'll just look up Ninja Gaiden Black. I mean, they could bring out, uh, oh, ah, oh, Christ, he, he's now more known for Devil May Cry and, uh, Devil May Cry and Dragon's Dogma, and I, I love the guy, but for some reason I can't remember his name right now, but the guy who's now famous for Devil May Cry and, uh, Dragon's Dogma was the one behind Alpha. Uh. Itagaki, Itagaki was the guy behind Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, it, it, it a gacky would be Loki or something like that. One of the villain heroes. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna look up Devil May Cry three. It's Suno. Yeah, I didn't. I I remembered the name as I was typing in Devil. Yeah, bring out It's Suno. It's Suno would be a fun one. He did one good fighting game series, and then he just stopped making fighting games altogether in favor of Devil May Cry. Yeah. I'd love to see him take a shot at fighting games again, because like he's pro I I think he's pretty well done with Devil May Cry. They could make it Devil May Cry 6, but I think Itsuno's done with the series. He's done what he's wanted to do. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I'm, I'm not too well-versed in the lore to know. Yeah, but, like, his main thing was the saga of Dante and Virgil, and that's pretty well over with 5. Ah, uh, yeah. I think he said he wants to work on Dragon's Dogma 2, first things first, though. So, which has not been officially announced, but Itsuno, Devil May Cry 5 sold gangbusters, and... Itsuno said, I want to do Dragon's Dogma 2, so Capcom is probably letting him. Yeah. I mean, he, he did threaten to leave if they don't do those, so... Yeah. Worked out in Capcom's favor, though. I mean, Capcom's been hitting on, firing on all cylinders since 2015 in every category except fighting games, though, so... Yeah. I, I, in, in, in most cylinders except Sengoku Basara and fighting games. <laughs> Dude... Imagine if, like, next year they're like, hey, Sengoku Basra 5, we've been working on this for a decade. <laughs> come, come, comes on disc with, with the English localization. I <laughs> thought you were about to say you were going to come. <laughs> I, I comes on disc. <laughs> Grunk put PP in disc. <laughs> Freaking hell. I was just, like, imagining, like, what if they announced it at E3 or something? Like, obviously they wouldn't announce it at E3 because the game's way too Japanese, but, like, they announced it at an event we're watching, and, like, just in the background we hear from your end, oh, 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 okay, I need to step out. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm, like, I feel like at this point I, it's, it's more realistic to, to pull for freaking Basara Cross 2. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Big... Oh man, Arxis is gonna be busy for a long while. Yeah, true. 
Honestly, I think Ono getting fired is a good sign because Ono was very evidently not working on Sengoku Basura. He was working on Street Fighter still. Yeah. So the fact that Ono's fired means they had to replace him, and hopefully if they replaced him, then that guy's actually working on it. I mean, from what I can tell, <laughs> the guy is actually working on it because, remember, they released Sumeraki, so... Yeah, that, Capcom always tests the water with re-releases. Sometimes it doesn't work. It didn't work for Darkstalkers, but... I, uh, did Sumeragi work? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a sales thing. I, I, I never did, did see if the sales were good enough. And just, and, yeah, just, guess, and I, the second Gobasara that it has been dead for most of the time, so... Ah. I, Devil May Cry 5 almost certainly began production after four special editions sold, like, gangbusters. Well, not gangbusters, but very, very well for what was a re-release with a couple new characters. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing with the, even the Sumeragi re re release is that from what I, what I uh, understand, all they did with the, all, all that's different between the two versions is that that one, that one has the DLC on disc, so, and, and you have it by default, and uh, they, they might have added like a couple more costumes, but that, that's, not, that's probably not, not true. Ha! Ah. So, yeah. Ah. I'd be interested to see Capcom test the waters on a couple more old franchises, honestly. I mean, I'm always up for Plasma Sword. Yeah, what if they did, just did that? What if they just released a compilation of the oddball fighting games they did? I'd buy it. And, and what if they... Okay, what if they... Plasma Sword, uh, Mech Warriors, Rival Schools, Red Earth, and maybe if they could get the license, JoJo. That would be an interesting one. Yeah, the th the thing with Plasma Sword too, to the thing the thing with that though is that like it, it's not one game; it's actually two because technically there was like I forget if Plasma Sword was Star it was Star I think it was Star Gladiator, the, the actual name of the series. Okay. Because you had you had Star Gladiator and then you had Star Gladiator two, the Blight of Blinstein or something like that, and uh, the subtitle stayed, but the name got changed for the game for some reason. Huh. At least over here. Oh, man. So I think the general takeaway of this uh, podcast is, like, Street Fighter V. Wow, it was mediocre enough to convince us we want something other than Street Fighter for a while. Yeah. Just, just, just li license out Akuma to everything, every, every other fighting game, and I'll be, I'll be satisfied with my Street Fighter fix for a while. Yeah. Because, like, throughout this podcast, we've been like, uh, how about CBS3? Uh, how about they bring back some of the classics? And it's a once an episode thing for me with Capcom games. Darkstalkers 4. Give it a shot. Bring back ass suplex Frankenstein. Oh, shit. All right. Eddie, what do you think we should do for next week's game? Because I have brought, I did bring up a candidate before this episode, but I think that you and I should both test to make sure that the game, like, even would really work for us before we commit to it. Yeah. Well, let's so, see what have we not done. We have MK, we have MK9. Although on my end, I couldn't really comment on things like the graphics because I I have to run it at freaking like two forty p. How long ago did we do Mortal Kombat? Fairly recently, from what I remember. I feel like the week but, we do Mortal Kombat. Nine is whatever week we can nail Mike down for a three-player session. Yeah. Which we're not going to be able to nail him down this week because he uninstalled Mortal Kombat 9 and, and pirated a copy of Mortal Kombat X because he wanted to finally give it a try. Uh. Which I, I told him, like, at the time I loved that game, but I, I'm not so hot on it now. So I'm interested to hear what his take will be on it when he's done playing with it in, a, like, a week or two. Uh, ooh. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna check what we've done while while we think of things so we know what we can't do. Have we done a blaze blue yet? Yes, we have. Right, right, and we just kind of were like, "Well, it's blaze blue." Yeah, we did. Neither we did. Spent, we did. Neither of us spent much time with it because it's blaze blue. Fucking blaze blue! Yeah. Whoa. 
Woohoo! We haven't okay. we haven't done Uniclear because we we wanted to, but everything went wrong with that recording, so we didn't use it. Oh, we didn't use that one. No. Huh. Okay. So that bloody hell, that's an option. Uh, I was going to suggest Guilty Gear One, but no, that you don't own it, and I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't imagine you would want to buy it. Uh, guilty. You suggested Guilty Gear One. Yeah, I said I would. Uh, I would suggest Guilty Gear One, but you don't do it. I don't. I don't imagine you would want to buy it. Hang on, let me check what price it is on uh, Steam. I bought the game. Do- I bought the game for like less less than ten bucks from what I remember. So if it's more than that, then. <laughs> uh, Guilty Gear One on Steam is ten bucks. Ah. Oh my god, this game looks so bad. Reviews, very positive. I think that may be nostalgia, nostalgia, guys. Okay, so in the last three episodes, we've done King of Fighters, Guilty Gear XX, and Street Fighter V. Yeah. Now, let me look at the old playlist. So we have done Tech... It's been uh, a lo- a while since we did Tekken Tag Tournament 2. So I'd say Tekken 7 is on the platter. Might not be was it possible for me because uh I don't know if it if it, if other people have had this problem but apparently I think my Xbox uh, CD tray is malfunctioning. <laughs> like it it takes a disk but it doesn't start reading it until the third try. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah, so basically I have to wrestle it every time I try to play anything on disc, and I have Tekken 7 on disc, so... Oh, boy. Ah, uh, shit. Did they not give it out for free in PS Plus? No, I, I wish. That'd certainly make lives easier. Yeah. Hmm. I did buy you a copy of Skullgirls, didn't I? No. I could have swore I did. Let me check. No, you you wanted to, but but like you said, you you said that you you would do it when it went on sale again for like no money whatsoever, and I don't think it went went on sale since then. <laughs> ha. Huh. Okay. And I was definitely not going to, like, to go on sale because Mike C. But <laughs> it'll it'll go on sale. It's just like it's not going to be having at anything new added. Yeah. Which the game was pretty well already done. They said they were going to add one more character, but then uh, the team split, so that character is not getting added. So our candidates really are Mortal Kombat Nine. Can't do Tekken 7 because we're the Xbox fucked up. Yeah. What what games do you have for the Xbox 360? Oh, uh, freaking. I, I have Tekken 6. I have uh, Super Street Fighter 4, but I, I have Ultra on PS4, so that, that's even less of an less, less issue. Uh, I don't know that we want to do Street Fighter immediately after Street Fighter. Yeah. That might be it, honestly. Okay. Here's a question that the answer is almost certainly no. Do you have WWE All-Stars? No. Okay. I, I wanted to buy it, but by the, by the time I, I got my 360, it, it was already out of print. So... Ha! Ah. Uh, you do not have a PS2 or PS2 emulator, right? I have a PS2. I'm not sure if it, if it's a uh, CD tray. Like it, once again, the always always the freaking reading mechanics. But uh, I'm not. I haven't tested it since. But last time I tried playing anything on my PS2, the uh the read read had made weird noises that I did not like. So <laughs> I I need to check again. So it, it's a possibility, just not a definite. Not not, not anything I can say for definite. Okay. Well, it sounds like 
I can definitely get Guilty Gear 1 when it goes on sale someday, but spending $10 on that game is like fucking no pass. But, I mean, I can do Mortal Kombat 9. I can do Mortal Kombat 9. The awkward part to me would just be the fact that uh, legitimately while we were doing this podcast, I went to my Steam library and uninstalled it. <laughs> I can just download it back. It's no problem. It's got a pretty small file size. It's only uh, 9 gigs, which is downright tiny by modern standards, but, like, I just wanted to check what other options there were. Let me boot up. Boot up. Oh, we could do another Blaze Blue, actually, because we do have Chrono Phantasma. We never did That's a video. We, did, we never did a video on Chrono Phantasma. But I don't th is there really enough difference that we would notice between Chrono Phantasma? Yes, all, and all limited characters. I feel like we'd just be doing the episode on unlimited characters then. I mean, yeah. <laughs> For the most part. Ha! Oh, freaking... Alright, I'm moving up my freaking... my PS4 to check what I have on that. Uni, I think I'd, I'd I'd rather do Uni than Mortal Kombat. So, oh yeah, 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 we can do that. If we don't, if you don't, tell me what you're finding, anyways. But I think Uni is a pretty high ranking answer. Yeah, I mean Uni. The, the thing with Uni is that like a lot of reference during the actual talking about Street Fighter Five, or at least what we call that, because <laughs> yeah. not much of that happened really. But uh, like the the thing the thing is, I look at. I look at on under under night and I I see like anime more anime Street Fighter, so. <laughs> My other thing with Uni is always just that I feel a little impotent on that game. Like, oh man, I should really know this game. I don't fucking know shit about this game. <laughs> because you think too much. Like, I've actually tested it with, with this with at least two people now. So it's it's I'd still say it's anecdotal, but it's not as anecdotal as it was before. But. Freaking, I, I played with Goku, uh, both on recording and off recording a bit, and I don't remember if it was on recording or not, but he he started doing freaking Roman cancels by by intuition, because I never explained to him how to do Roman cancels, he just started doing them. Huh. So I, 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 think, I think I'm just not a body player, man. I think I'm a mind player. Yeah. I think my problem was that I've never sat down and been like, all right, let's do some fucking testing with you. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I did. I did when I was, uh, who's the main kid? Oh, uh, freaking hell. I hide. I think his name Hyde. I, I did once sit down with Hyde and test, like, what was the biggest combo I could find with him? Which, oh, oh man. Yeah. That isn't it weird how some, like some games, just one character will make you be like, oh yeah, let's play that. Like I, I was kind of thinking like, ah, oh, uni. Yeah. I guess I could put, play a little bit of Hilda. Yeah. Then I forgot about Hyde, and the moment I remembered Hyde, I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm good to play Uni." <laughs> yeah, that's I, a... I don't know. I know Hyde's just a generic Shoto, but like, I really love Hyde for some reason. He's probably my favorite Shoto that I've ever seen in a game. Well, yeah. competing with Ryu, with uh, Rio and Robert, maybe, and Yuri. But Yuri, I think Yuri's different enough that she's pretty well not a Shoto anymore. You know? I don't know because, like, we, we just say that Akuma's not a Shoto. <laughs> By that point. He's got all the basic tools, it's just that he's got a little bit extra. Yeah, that, that, that's my point, because... Well, 14 Yuri is, is just a Kuma. That's true. Well, she's got the Saiha, and she's got her little running throw. To me, that's what sets her apart, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. And, she, and she's got the Gadoken that just bl uh, burns out immediately, so... Like Street Fighter V Akuma. Yeah. To me, like the the only real tool that I think of as a Shoto tool for Yuri is the show is the Shoryu. Or uh, what do they call it in that Hoken? I don't, I don't remember what the Shoryu's are called in KOF. Yeah, with her, I, with her, I just call it double, because that's what she says when she does the second one. Ah. Uh. Uh, okay, how about... Yeah, it, it's... Okay, so the, the the only fighting games I own that are, are downloaded right now 
or Sam Show 5 and Sam Show 6. So. I think I own a copy of Sam Show 5. You do. Because you told me. I remember. Yes. Yes. I think I technically own two copies of Sam Show 5 because I bought one off of good old games. And then, like, a couple weeks later, Epic gave one away. Uh, well, yeah, by, by that standard, I, I own two, maybe three, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, uh, I've got an idea. Yeah? Let's go ahead and do uni. Afterwards, I will just try and list off in the FGA tab on Discord all the fighting games that I own and each platform I own them on. And you can also clarify like whether or not you're able to get your Xbox or your PS2 working. All right. And at some point I will mention whether or not Terradrome, I can get Terradrome working. All right. And if there's any technical weirdness, I'll try to put my solution in the discord just in case. Cause it did look like there was some technical weirdness. I'm going to have to work out. Okay. All right. And folks, we will see you later when we do uni. We're going to fighting university. Were, fighting games were.